the two best countries in the world, the UK and the US. But which is best? For van life and in general, we just want to know. We have camper vans in both the UK and the US. And as I grew up in Oklahoma, I'll be flying the flag for the US. And as I am British through and through, I'm here to represent the Brits. So let's get to this. Number one, safety. America is not safe. You are guaranteed to get shot by a Disney fan if you step on American soil. This is something you might hear from someone when you're planning a trip to the US. We wouldn't have gone on a trip recently with our son had we thought it wasn't safe. So you're telling me it's never crossed your mind that someone could break into the van and they could have a gun? Okay, yes, that's crossed my mind, but has it happened? Well, I've actually looked into this and statistically, there is lower chance in the UK of murders, gun crimes, stabbings, racially fueled crimes, home invasions, burglaries, and street crimes. So I want to say, does that make the UK safer? Why? Yes, yes it does. One nil to UK, <laughs> get in lads! Number two, wildlife encounters. Now, there is absolutely no contest when it comes to US versus UK when it comes to animal encounters. The animals that you get in the US are hands down way better than the animals you get in the UK. Yeah, reluctantly, I have to concede here because there is outrageous experiences out there. We have seen moose just outside of our camper van. Yep. I stumbled across a dead bear. Absolutely wild. I also had this experience happen to me in the wilderness with wolves. 4.42 a.m. and we've both just been woken up to the sound of a wolf very near the camp. And what do you get in the UK? Squirrels, fox, a badger if you're lucky. Okay, I will agree that our animals are a bit shit. <laughs> But I have seen Emma get equally as excited for a heron as I have for a bunch of bison. But I will concede that is a point to the US. It's 1-1. One, one. Number three is the cost. And America is great if you have loads of money. I mean, the UK isn't cheap either, but I will give you that. Compared to the US, you do just seem to burn through money when you're out there. It seems there's a lot of hidden costs in the US. When I go to buy something in the shop here in the UK, if it says that the price is £5.30, I will pay £5.30. Mm. But when I go to the US, if it says $5.30, for somehow it turns out to be $8.50 when they add all the taxes on at the last minute. And don't forget the tip. And then they turn around the little thing and it says, like, how much do you want to tip this person for buying a can of Coke or a coffee? <laughs> Tipping has got outrageous in the US, I just want to say that. <laughs> However, the fuel is cheaper in the US than it is in the UK by a, quite a substantial amount. Yeah, but the US is massive, so you have to drive further, so you end up spending more money. <laughs> so... Yeah, okay, okay, I'll give you that. <laughs> but you do tend to get free refills at the restaurants. Oh great, so, so if you just drink <laughs> all of the coke in the world, then you can claw back some of that money that you've just paid in tip and taxes. Yeah, it just depends what you're prioritizing here. <laughs> also, the portions are big in the US. True. So, so we can split those, save money. And do we ever split those meals? No. No, we wolf them down ourselves. <laughs> we just put on more weight. Yeah. We go. <laughs> so it's more expensive there as well. Yeah, true. Physically. <laughs> the campsites in the UK are way cheaper. You've got to give us that. Okay, yeah, they are substantially cheaper. Like. There's a crazy difference between the campsites in the US and here. It's not uncommon to pay like a hundred bucks for a campsite in the US, which is, I don't think I've ever seen one for that price in the UK. It's no. just not possible. I think the most I've ever seen in the UK is for about 40 pounds, like yeah. 50 bucks, something like that. Yeah, I stayed in this beautiful one when I was in the camper van on my own that cost 12 pound 50. £12.50 and that comes with facilities and everything. Yeah, the, the cheapest we had on our last trip was $40 Yeah, and they are few and far between. True. Uh, when you get them though in the state parks they are brilliant, Yeah, but they're just quite hard to get. Yeah, that's true. I'll give you that one. So that means that the UK is back in the lead. It is 2-1 and I just want to, do you identify as American? <laughs> I do not, okay. but I did grow up there. I spent 12 years of my life in the US, so I have a special bond and relationship with the Americans. So I feel that in this particular conversation, I'm able to, to hold the flag for them on their side. Well, you're not doing a very good job. All right, all Two right. 2-1 we'll, UK. We'll get there, guys. We'll get there. <laughs> Number four is food. And as British people are connoisseurs <laughs> of good food, I think we are the best people to judge who has the best food. But before we get into that, we want to talk to you about today's sponsor. 
we're really pleased to be working again with our friends over at HelloFresh. Now, HelloFresh is a very handy service which delivers fresh pre-measured ingredients directly to your door in a box like this. Now they have a bunch of different ranges of recipes to choose from, such as their calorie smart range or their super quick range. Now today we are going to be making a veggie noodle stir fry from their quick range, which I cannot wait to get stuck into. We mostly use HelloFresh when we're at home, but one little hack that we've managed to find is that if you order a box of HelloFresh before a camper van trip, it saves so much space on our tiny little camper van fridge. It also helps to take one less decision out of the day because dinner is sorted. There's new recipes being added every week and there's more than 44 to choose from so it never gets boring. Meals start at just £3.15 per portion and that's before you apply any discount which leads very swiftly on to the fact that we have an epic discount for you guys which is 60% off your first box plus an extra 25% off the next two months and some free gifts. So if you're interested in this deal use the link down in the description below scan the QR code and make sure to use the code BEANS2023 to apply the offer. So the UK gets a bad rap for having terrible food. <laughs> and I think that is very, very unfair because we have delicious, delicious food here. You're just not eating in the right places. <laughs> You could argue our food is very beige, though. But you could argue that the American food is very beige. Everywhere you yeah, look, beige true. food. <laughs> I think that's why we're kind of brothers in that sense. We love beige food. Yeah, we, we both do yeah. beige food very, very well, don't we? <laughs> also, the thing that I think that both countries are the best in the world at is foreign food. So collectively, mm. with the diversity from the two cultures, the foreign food is amazing That's in both true. places. I still think the US should win this one because things like the Mexican food in the US, come on, like you love yeah, the Mexican food. The Mexican food, food in the US is amazing, but have you had the Indian food in the UK? Yes. It's world class. But actually, our national dish is a curry. <laughs> So that just goes to show how good the Indian food is. I would go as far to say that the Indian food in the UK is better than anywhere. Wow. Including India. Oh my god. I don't think we have that many Indian people watching to attack us. <laughs> I would say it's a tie. Okay, we both get a point. That makes it 3-2 to the UK. Get in. <laughs> We're gonna catch them up. We're gonna catch them up, guys. Don't worry. Number five is truck stops. They have truck stops everywhere in the US and it's super easy to find a free place to stay overnight at a truck stop. Here, they have those time limit things so you can't actually stay overnight very easily. And that's true, but in the UK, we don't have those really weird big slits in the toilets, which I refuse to ever accept is acceptable. <laughs> You're obsessed with those slits in Why the Why are they there watching me poo? What is it? What's your obsession? Why on earth? And have you seen like, the doors are like really high so you can actually like <laughs> look under? What are they trying to protect people from? It's the only country in the world where you have these big slits in the toilets. I think that the food in the UK's truck stops is way better and more varied than in the US. Okay, yeah. I, I mean, I can't argue that. The truck stop food in the US is pretty bad. Sorry, guys. But... The stuff in the UK is great. You have a variety as well, right? Yeah. You tend to have at least one supermarket, one coffee shop, one fast food joint. Like, you can get anything. So Emma's doing my job here for me. Yeah. She is fighting now the UK. I'm not, but you can't argue that the truck stops or service stations, as we, as we would say it, are the best. The food is the best. If I mean, you're, you're stopping for a snack above all else, it's great. I'm British through and through and I completely agree. <gasps> Damn it! We're gonna get some points soon! <laughs> so the Brits here are getting a very healthy lead. We're 4-2 up. This is the opposite of the Boston Tea Party. Dreadful. I don't think this is at all relevant. Number six is the people slash mentality of the two countries. Yes, and... Controversial. It is controversial because I think Within the camping, caravanning, RVing communities, everyone is great. Like yeah. people are lovely in both places. But on the whole, I think Americans take the top slot? Spot? <laughs> top spot. Yeah. They're just so bloody friendly. 
you can't deny that they're friendly. I can't. You loved that on the last I bit. You were, you were buzzing about how friendly they were. Okay, well, in this role of this game, I'm fighting the UK's corner, but I do love the friendliness of the US people. Mm -hmm. It is extremely infectious, and yeah. it's something that I do wish we were more like here in the UK. We are a miserable bunch. <laughs> Well, we can be a miserable bunch. We can be lovely. Yeah, but we can be miserable too. Yeah, whereas they're more lovely most of the time. Especially to strangers. They're very warm and welcoming to strangers. Whereas sometimes yeah. you've got to like crack the ice on the surface with the Brits to mm -hmm. be able to get into the gooey centre, you know? And actually, I would say that one thing that I think is very noticeable about the US versus UK in that regard is that when you're staying out in nature spots, like free spots, in the US, nobody bothers you. Yeah. In the UK, they're not always very happy about you being there, even yeah, if you're not bothering true. anyone. Yeah, for example, we have been in Scotland before and they don't like camper vanning so much. No. And we could be in the middle of nowhere, not causing any issue, but people would drive by and would honk their horn they would beep at you to try and wake you up whereas i feel like in the us when it's kind of encouraged that part of freedom like do what you want kind of mentality mm. as long as which you i do really anyone, like like what's the problem yeah yeah so i do i think americans definitely win on that point yeah okay which i believe brings a score to four three we're clawing it back guys still losing <laughs> Number seven, historical sites. And if you're into history, I think <laughs> the little known country called the UK is gonna whoop some American butt right here <laughs> just by the pure fact that we are a lot older. <laughs> yeah, okay, I mean, what can I say to that? Ob obviously the UK has a lot more historical sites to go and see. It is a lot more interesting in that we have, from pretty much every point in history, you can go back and visit sites even in like tiny little towns and villages like this. Yeah, there's just old stuff on the side of the road. You might go Everywhere. into a pub and it will be 600 years old casually. It's not even a big deal. It's not even <laughs> a selling point to the place. It just <laughs> happens to be really old. Yeah. Um, I don't really like old stuff. So this wouldn't actually be a big selling point to me, but because it means that we're going to get another point here, <laughs> I'm just pretty happy. I mean, the US does have a lot of history and a lot of historical sites that you can go and visit, but I will give you that, that the UK does have a little bit more. Yeah, we've got <laughs> Romans and Vikings. Yeah, that's no, just I mean, way pretty, cooler. Pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> that brings the score to a whopping 5 3. Oh. It's looking very good for the Brits right now. All right, but. I can almost guarantee that the next one is going to be a point for the US. Well, probably because we wrote all these points and we know the final score. <laughs> so the next one <laughs> is geographical diversity. So what the US lacks in history, they can kick your little UK butts. <laughs> I love how I'm American in this. <laughs> I feel I'm fully on their side right now. The US has every type of geological landscape that you could imagine. They have deserts, they have mountains, they have beaches, they have everything. Well, actually, the UK also has all of those things. Yeah, but it's way better and way more extreme in the US. Come yeah, on. The US is very extreme. <laughs> My God, have you ever done that? Just then. Wow. Well, Nailed yeah, it. Yeah, you really pulled it off. I mean, that's one of the main reasons we have a camper van in the US is because of the diversity there. Yeah, in the US, it is more than world class, the nature. And I think the scale of it all is what's so impressive and you can't really grasp it unless you see it. Yeah. In the UK, we do have all these awesome things, Yeah. but it is just a much smaller version. Like they say, it's all bigger and better in the US. And yeah. that does include all of their amazing nature spots. And they have deserts. We don't have deserts in the UK. We do have a designated desert. Do we? It's in Dungeness, and we've been there on the channel. It's not really a desert, though, is there? There's no cactus. Well, look at this, what's on screen right now. <laughs> Officially designated desert. So you get the point. Yes, we do get a point. So that makes it 5-4? Correct. We are catching up. Number eight is size. Does size really matter? So uh, what are we talking about here? Are we talk about the size of the people? No! Because I guess we'll never know who's the biggest. I think we're all just as bad as each other, aren't we? <laughs> I meant penis size. Oh my god. <laughs> but here we are actually talking about the size of just everything, I guess. And everything in the US is way bigger, yeah. apart from the penises. 
Whoa. Whoa. So you're going to start a war in the comments now, are we? Everything in the US is bigger from the gaps in the toilet stools. Oh my God, not the gaps again. <laughs> to the portion sizes, to the size of the country. Yeah. And I, as a Brit, love our small little country. You can get to so many places and see so much in a short space of time. We were in the US for a month recently and we only went to Colorado and we barely saw anything. And we drove like eight hours south. <laughs> <laughs> and that's still in the same state. Well, I would argue that's a good thing because you never get bored. There's always more to go and see and do because it is so massive. Okay. <laughs> well, on the thing that we wrote down, this was a, a plus for the, for the UK. So uh, we have to stick to the script. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. So does size matter to you? No, I'm not superficial. <laughs> UK wins, one point. The UK wins. <laughs> you hear that, lads? UK wins. That's six four to the UK. We basically <laughs> can't lose from this point. Well, let's see, shall we? Number nine is boondocking or wild camping, which I think the US takes by a landslide. You could die in a landslide out there. <laughs> But that should go on the safety points. Yeah, we've already done that, sorry. Statist been and gone, been and gone, it's all happened, it's done, it's done. Statistically, you are way more likely to die in a landslide in the US than the UK. All right, fact, jeez. Probably. The US is so much better when it comes to wild camping because they have all these designated boondocking sites on BLM lands and places like that where you know it's safe and allowed that you can be there. You don't really get that so much in the UK. Yeah, in the UK, it's definitely not encouraged in the same way as out in the US. And we went to Colorado last year and we drove deep into the mountains mm. and we came across these spots where it's just free to stay yeah. and designated you're allowed to stay up there for a period of time. Uh, we even got to wake up to moose outside our camper van. Uh, we just don't have anything like that here, so it's very difficult for me to argue that point. Yeah. We do have some wonderful spots to stay. Oh, for sure. Especially in Scotland, we stayed in some amazing spots. But, but again, you're always worried that people are going to be beeping at you or pissed off that you're there, whereas you just don't get that in the US because people know you're allowed to be there and they're cool with it. Also, there is such a bigger RV culture out in the US. Yeah. And then in turn, it's all designed for that. We've stayed in that amazing place at the bottom of that mountain in Colorado as well. Yeah, that was fantastic. That was a BLM land spot, so it was completely free. Nobody bothered us the whole time we were there. Okay, I'm willing to concede on this point. Thank you very much. So does that mean it's now five all? Six five, because I can count. Six five? Oh, six five to you? Yeah. Oh, damn it. Right. We still got we still got time guys <laughs> well it's the very last point so the us only has the chance to tie this that brings us on to number 10 weather i feel very comfortable that the us is going to win this point because yes okay the us maybe has more extreme weather but maybe it has it does have more <laughs> extreme weather it's horrific people die from the extreme weather out yes, there okay but at least it's not raining all the time you know, at least if well, there's... So the snow in New York or the heat of like Desert Valley, the hottest place on earth. Oh, wow, the weather's lovely here in the US. Yes, but because it's such a massive country, you can go to whichever place takes your fancy at whatever time of the year. So you don't like winter in New York? Be a snowbird. They even coin phrases for these people. Go down south, enjoy the sunshine instead. There's always a way to escape the weather in the US because they have so many climates. Whereas here, if it's wet and miserable here, it's probably wet and miserable most places. Yeah, that is true. The weather. I mean, I love the weather. <laughs> Who doesn't love constant rain and grey <laughs> and drizzle and a hundred words to describe the rain because we have so much of it? I mean, I think that's wonderful. <laughs> and it kind of suits the British personality just great. Like in the US, you could go skiing or go to the beach all in the same season. Okay. You can't do that yet. Yeah, well, we can get all of that stuff if we go to Europe. We're talking about the UK. You can't bring Europe into this. That's not fair. So I guess that means that at the last minute, the US has equalized, <laughs> oh, making oh, it six oh. all. Yeah, but you say six all. 
I actually had a thought that if this is six or I should slide in here what at the last tie minute with a tiebreaker and I already have thought of what we could do it on. Okay, go on then. UFO sightings. Well, every, everyone knows that, <laughs> that all the aliens go and hang out in the US. I've so, seen so the movies. So you're saying that the US wins this point? The, the, <laughs> there are definitely more UFO sightings in the US You heard than it. The UK. You heard it straight from the horse's mouth. The US is better than the UK. It's official. We win. You lose. <laughs> With that obnoxious way of winning, <laughs> I will admit defeat and I will apologise to all our British followers and stuff. I've tried, guys, but <laughs> you heard the girl. <laughs> we didn't stand a chance. Let us know down in the comments which do you think is better, the UK or the US, in terms of van life or just in general because it's fun to compare. If you like the video, give it a big fat thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for future content and nothing left to say. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time and beans out.